All right, so now we're going to look at trigonometric ratios and special angles. So what a special angle really is, it's basically an angle um, that has an exact value, right? Now, if you guys review back to your trig ratios, uh, which I hopefully you, you can, you already know, your primary trig ratios include uh, the sine ratio, the cosine ratio, and the tan ratio. I think the most common mnemonic that we use to, to represent that is SOHCAHTOA. So the sine ratio sine theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine ratio, which is uh, cosine theta, is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent ratio, which is tan theta, is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, um, hopefully you can, you guys can understand that. And uh, the one thing that you need to understand also is that these are what we call the primary trig ratios. So primary trigonometric ratios. And these are only applicable when you have a right angle triangle. You can only apply these when you have right angle triangles, right? And it's very important to understand some of the values. Now there are certain angle of measurements that give us exact values. And I've actually listed that here. Right, so 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Uh, some of these values you can actually determine by drawing out special triangles. Right, but what I want you to do is memorize these values, guys. Doesn't matter how you guys memorize it, but I need you to memorize these values. You can find these values through a special triangle, right? Um, the other values you design through a unit circle. Now, I think it is worth mentioning how to look at the unit circle. So I, I've kind of constructed that here. I wanna, I wanna show you guys that it's just in a bit. Um, but what you need to understand here is that these angles have specific values. Now, because we talked about um, the radian measurement of angles instead of degrees, this is what we're gonna be mainly focusing on. So this is for the special angles that have um, exact values, and this is their radian measurement, right? So 30 degrees is basically pi over six radians. Pi over uh, 45 degrees is pi over four radians. Uh, 60 degrees is pi over three radians, right? And hopefully you can understand how to convert from degrees to radians. And these are the values associated with this, right? So if you had sine pi over six radians, it's equivalent to one half, right? This is because this is basically sine uh, 30. So you can take a look at this table here. And I, I want you guys to memorize this table. It's very important. Um, and you can use any technique that you really need to, to memorize it. You can use a special triangle technique that they're showing here. And this is one of the special triangles, which is useful for uh, 45 degrees, sine 45. And this is the special type of triangle that's called 45, 45, 90 triangle. You can also use this triangle here to find um, the 45 degrees, sorry, 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Right, but put another way, 45 degrees is pi over four radians, 30 degrees is pi over six radians, and uh, 60 degrees is pi over three radians. Okay, so these two are really the same type of triangle, but you can use this to find the values or you can memorize it. And I think when you do enough questions, you'll just kind of get this memorized anyways. Okay, but this is very important. Uh, and these are some of the special uh, angles that you need to memorize, right? Also these other values, so zero degrees is zero radians, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. These are also special angles that you can actually determine through the unit circle. Okay, so make sure you guys understand uh, some of these values. Try to memorize uh, some of these values. And you can notice that tan 90 is undefined and tan 270 is undefined. And the reason for that is because tan theta is actually defined as sine theta over cosine theta. And this is basically, it's a special type of identity. Right? This is called a quotient identity. You may have been exposed to this in your previous math course. What an identity is, is basically a, a universal formula that works for every scenario, right? Or at least every uh, value of the domain that you're considering. Um, and the value, we know that like, for instance, 10, uh, 60 degrees or 10 pi over three, if you use this formula, it's equal to sine pi over three, 
over cosine pi over three. And sine pi over three, and hopefully, you know, eventually you will memorize this, but right now you can use the table. And you can also just do these questions by using the table for the current time being. If you do enough questions, you'll just have it memorized. Sine pi over three is sine 60, which is square root three over two. Cosine pi over three is cosine 60, which is one half. And if you evaluate this by dividing these two fractions, you get square root three over one. Well, look at that, right? Pi over three, 60, square root three over one, which is square root three. So our question is, okay, why is that 10, 90 degrees undefined? So 10, 90 degrees is known as pi over two radians. Why is this undefined? Well, 10 pi over two is equal to sine pi over two divided by cosine pi over two. Cosine pi over two or cosine 90, we know is zero. Sine pi over two, sine 90 is one. And you get one over zero. And you can imagine that any fraction where the denominator zero is undefined. Right, so because it's uh, it's one over zero, it's undefined. And you'll actually notice the same thing with 270. So I would say go over this, uh, guys, learn the tables. Uh, I don't need to go over the special triangles with you, but I, I wanna show you some applications of expressions where we can use some of these exact values. Before that, I, I do wanna kind of draw your attention here a little bit to uh, this unit circle and how to use it, right? Because it, it is somewhat relevant. So I'm gonna draw like, uh, your attention here to this unit circle. Uh, this unit circle actually brings up a very important point. And it is basically um, a representation of an angle in standard form. Okay, so what is an angle in standard form? And we're gonna talk about this uh, a lot as we continue throughout this unit. Um, an angle in standard form is basically where uh, the initial arm, which is your reference line array is placed at the positive x-axis and the terminal arm, right, which is the other ray that is a rotation away from the initial arm is placed either at or away from the x-axis, okay? So put another way, I'm gonna make the initial arm in blue. I'm gonna make the terminal arm in red so you guys can see it or in this case, we'll say the terminal arm is purple, okay? So the initial arm is blue, like navy blue here. So this is your initial arm, guys. And the terminal arm is everything in purple. Sorry, it should be an initial arm. You can imagine that if the initial arm and the terminal arm were on top of each other, this would be zero degrees. The terminal arm is some degree rotation uh, away from the initial arm. In standard position, we look at counterclockwise rotations as positive degrees and clockwise rotations as negative degrees or negative a negative angle. We're gonna mainly look at this in radians, guys. But I think in this, uh, in this chart, I've indicated degrees and radians, right? So counterclockwise rotations are positive, um, clockwise rotations are negative. If the angle is zero degrees or zero radians, that means that the initial and the terminal arm are right on top of each other on the x-axis. So in purple, you're gonna see uh, the terminal arm and you can see different angles associated with that terminal arm. For instance, if the terminal arm ended up on this y-axis here, right? Then the angle here, so if the terminal arm ended here, the y-axis, this would tell you uh, that uh, there is a 90 degree angle, right? And that's what you can see here. This is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. Uh, the key idea about this is that this is a special type of circle. This is called a unit circle. Okay, so what is a unit circle? Well, unit circle is just, a, it's, a, it's a special circle where the radius is one unit. So all of these radiuses, all of these um, these purple lines here, they're just one unit. Okay, so that's what you wanna kind of get from this guys, right? It's just one unit. And based on this, because we know that the radius of a unit circle is one unit, we know that this point here is one and zero. We know that this point here is zero and one. We know that this point here is negative one and zero. We know that this point here is zero and negative one. Okay, so what does this help us to achieve, right? make some space here just to indicate what that means. 
But if you have any, um, if you if your standard arm or your initial arm is here, and you had a terminal arm within the scope of, well, let's, let's use purple. Let's keep it. Try to keep it consistent here. You had a terminal arm in the scope of this uh, this unit circle here. Theta, this angle here is your angle. Okay. And if you think about it this way, if this is actually in fact a unit circle, then this would be one zero, right? And this would create this angle would subtend this this uh, arc length that's created subtends this angle. And if you wanted to figure out uh, this terminal arm, because we know that the vertex is zero and zero, and this is another point that you need to understand in angles and center form that the vertex is zero and zero. Okay, so these are some of the tenants, guys, that you need to kind of know. Right, that the in standard an angle in standard position has an initial arm on the positive x-axis, the terminal arm is away from the positive x-axis, the counterclockwise rotations are positive angles, uh, clockwise rotations are negative angles, and the vertex is set at zero and zero. If you looked at creating a point, because this essentially can be expressed, this is a Cartesian plane, right? And this would be quadrant one, quadrant two. Right, quadrant three, I think they already mentioned it here, right? Quadrant two, quadrant one, quadrant four, right? Uh, you can express this, the tip of the terminal arm as a point, right? You can think about this as a coordinate X and Y. Well, if, it, if you think about this as a coordinate of X and Y, the radius would be R, and this would be X and this would be Y. Then technically what you can notice here is that if you apply the ratio, this is a, this would create a 90 degree angle. If you apply the ratios here, sine theta would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which would basically be y over r, right? Cosine theta would be um, x over r. And then tan theta, which would be y over x. Because this is a unit circle, guys, the radius is one. So if the radius is one here, make a correction, then this would just be x over one. This would just be x. Cosine would be x, right? X is equal to cosine theta for a unit circle, right? For a sine, if r is one, then this would just be y over one. So y is equal to sine theta. And if you actually notice, according to the unit circle, where everything's just held constant, and you can apply this notion to everything, really, tan theta is y over x, so therefore tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta. That's where this formula comes from that we talked about earlier. Uh, the quotient identity can be derived from the unit circle. So very, it's very useful proofs to understand this. Right? This is called the quotient identity. Now you can see why this actually occurs. Well, why is this relevant? Well, we said that every point of the terminal arm we can express as um, x and y, or another way you can look at this is basically cosine theta, sine theta. You can look at every point in terms of its coordinates of the angle that it creates, right? So for instance, if you wanted to look at an angle, see if I can make some space here. So if you wanted to look at an angle um, like Let's say the initial arm and terminal arm, and remember that theta is the degree of rotation uh, of the initial arm to the terminal arm, right? If you wanted to look at um, an angle um, where a degree of rotation is between the initial and terminal arm, let's say that theta was equal to zero degrees or zero radians. Let's, let's try to use radians here, guys, but you can also use this notion of degrees. If it's zero radians, then you can think about your point here as cosine zero, zero degrees or radians, sine zero degrees or radians, right? So it's cosine zero, sine zero. And if you plug this into your, your unit circle, cosine zero, we know that it has a, uh, this is equivalent to one and zero. So the point is also equivalent to one and zero. As a result, cosine zero is one, sine zero is zero. That's how you get these values of 
zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees, right? Put another way, if you're looking at data, if data was 90 degrees, well, what that means is the difference uh, where the terminal arm is positioned in purple and the initial arm, the angle here is 90 degrees, right? And in this case, if you're looking at 90 degrees, well, the point can be expressed as cosine 90, sine 90. And this is equivalent, if you look at your, your unit circle, it's equivalent to the point zero and one. This tells you that cosine 90 is zero and sine 90 is one. And that's where you get the values of sine and cosine 90, right? Uh, this, you can apply this for 90 uh, for degrees and radians, right? Obviously, I want I want you to kind of um, adopt radians, but I think when we show it to you in degrees, you can also kind of appreciate a little bit more, right? And you don't have to just use uh, these special values. You can also find using this notion, you can use this for any value really. Like if you wanted to look at, um, but you'd have to be given the point really, right? So it's it's just, it only really is relevant for zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, unless you actually figure out the point that it's co corresponding to in terms of its value, right? But you can use this notion to find out all your special angles. So all of these guys are from the unit circle. And I'll, I'll let you guys try that out. Now you don't have to, uh, solve for the values using the unit circle, although it is a great communication question and it is relevant to understand this, what an angle in standard form is. We're going to be working with this constantly. And right? you can understand a lot of proofs from this. This is a very useful tool. So I, I really just want you to focus on the unit circle if, if you're going to use some of these um, values to, to find some of the special angles, but also because some of the properties that we talk about in the unit circle, we're going to constantly address, right? Um, but at the end of the day, um, you need to memorize these values, okay? So that's what you need to kind of understand from this, right? You don't have to draw out each angle in the unit circle. Um, not only does this show the unit circle, but it also shows some of the correlated angles, which we will talk about as well. Okay? And the correlated angles are values uh, where the special angles extend away from the acute realm. So the acute realm being acute angles are between zero and 90 degrees right, and a right angle is 90 degrees, um, then obtuse angles and reflex angles will follow greater than 90 degrees, right? So we can use uh, some of these, these notions here to actually figure out uh, obtuse and reflex angle values as long as they are multiples of, um, as long as they are multiples of special angles, okay? So we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but what I want you to really get from this slide, memorize this table, guys, okay, that's very key. Oops. So, like I like I mentioned before, um, you can basically use some of these special angles, uh, which are acute angles. So specifically, thirty degrees, forty-five degrees, and six degrees. However, we're not going to look at them in degrees. So, pi over uh, six radians, pi over four radians, pi over three radians use these values to find obtuse measurements. Okay? And that's essentially what we're gonna be focusing on. Um, and this is just another uh, representation of the unit circle we talked about before. Uh, however, I wanna really just focus on some of the angles that fall in the, in the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant, right? You can imagine that in the first quadrant, these are all of the acute angles, right? Obtuse angles, would fall in quadrant two, and then reflex angles would fall in quadrant two and quadrant four, right? Sorry, three and quadrant four. Now, what you need to understand from this is, let's say that we want to calculate for some of the ratios in the first quadrant, right? And we're looking at, once again, angles in standard form. So just to kind of reiterate once again, just to key points, what are angles in standard form? Well, this includes, um, these are angles represented on a Cartesian plane. Right, 
And the angle is a degree of rotation. So angle is a degree of rotation from the initial arm. And the initial arm here is the ray that's found on the positive x-axis uh, to the terminal arm. Okay, so the angle of rotation is from the initial arm to the terminal arm. And a counterclockwise rotation is a positive angle. A clockwise rotation is a negative angle. Okay, and that's something you want to understand. And the vertex is the origin. Okay, so this is an angle in standard position. And I said this. If we were to look at, if we were to assess the first quadrant here, should have definitely made some space here, but it's fine. If we were to uh, address the first quadrant here, right, uh, this is quadrant one, let's say this is theta, and in red here, this is my terminal arm, and blue here, this is my initial arm. Right, it's, it's kind of like a vector if you want to think of it like that. Right, so this is my terminal arm here. Theta is a degree of rotation, and you can actually notice that in the first quadrant, if you were to represent this as a point, right, let's call this point X and Y, this would be Y and this would be X. Right, so if you were to represent this as a ratio, because then y and x are nine degrees apart, you imagine that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and let's assume that this is a radius, because if you do a full circle, it becomes the radius of the circle, right? If sine theta is uh, y over r, cosine theta is x over r, and tan theta is y over x. And you can also notice here that um, we, can, we can notice that tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta because if you, instead of even just looking at the unit circle, if you divide these two, if you do y over r divided by x over r, you get y over r times r over x, which is y over x. So it is in fact sine theta over cosine theta. It's another way to prove it. Now, having said this, uh, what you want to understand here is all of these ratios are positive, right? Now the radius is always positive, guys. But X and Y can be negative because it is a Cartesian plane, right? But all of the ratios in the first quadrant are positive. And that's essentially what we're showing here. Okay, so all the ratios in the first quadrant are positive. So make sure you understand that. Well, then let's take a look at the second quadrant. Okay, how does that how does that differ? And you can actually see this illustrated here. I'm just kind of redrawing it so that way, you know, you can you guys can also appreciate it this way. Let's take a look at the second quadrant, right? So I'm just gonna make some space here. How does the second quadrant differ? Okay, so this is Cartesian plane. And remember that an angle in standard position means that your initial arm, which is a navy blue here, the initial arm is always on the positive x-axis. In this case, now the angle is the degree of rotation of the initial arm to the terminal arm. Let's say the terminal arm ends up here in quadrant two. And you can also imagine here that the angle is obtuse now. Okay, so if we look at this point here, if this was, you know, if this is a point on a circle when you do a full rotation, Right, if you look at this point, this is negative x, this is y, and on your Cartesian plane, you have a point negative x and y. Now, the thing about this is that we're more like, we, we said that um, we can only use these primary trig ratios for right angle triangles, right? In this case, uh, we can't use this value of theta because it's not a right angle triangle. So what we tend to use is we convert this into a right angle triangle and we use something called a related acute angle. So this here, beta is a related acute 
angle. So beta is related to acute angle. And you need to understand that beta, if you, you know that theta and beta are supplementary angles, that means that they add up to 180 degrees. Now, I, I want you guys to look at this in radians. So it's gonna add up to pi radians, right? So therefore, beta is equal to pi radians minus theta. This is how we're gonna be looking at it. Okay, we're gonna be looking at it in terms of beta and then converting it into pi minus theta. Okay, make sure you change your worldview into degrees, guys, please. Um, but in the, if you take a look at this uh, this circle here, that has all of the values. Uh, I've kind of there is basically a crosstalk between the radians and degrees. So try to just try to view this in degrees and radians simultaneously until you're you're okay with the conversion. So let's say we were looking at the ratios in the second quadrant. Sine beta here. Uh, if this is the point negative x and y, this is y and this is x, negative x, right? Then sine beta here, if you look at it opposite over hypotenuse, it's still y over r. And you notice here that sine beta is y over r, which is the same as sine theta from the first quadrant. So this is equal to sine theta. So that tells you that sine is positive. And okay, what does this imply? Well, it implies that because beta is pi minus theta, sine pi minus theta is equal to sine theta. Okay, and this um, series of events here is what's going to tell us uh, which ratio is positive in which quadrant. Right, and I'm sure you have been exposed to this previously. It's really useful because um, the values of the special angles don't change, but the signs of the special angles, depending on what your obtuse or reflex angle measurement is, uh, will change. Okay, and you can also notice here that in the second quadrant. Cosine beta is negative x over r, because it's adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Which is, if you compare it to the first quadrant, is negative cosine theta. So this shows you that cosine um, pi minus theta is equal to negative cosine theta, All right? So whatever the value is, it's going to be negative. And 10 will also be negative if you show it. If you do this throughout all of them, Right, uh, and uh, what I want you to do is I want you to try to memorize um, some of the angles for the related ang acute angles. Now, hopefully you've done this last year. If not, I've, I've, I'll also attach a video where you guys can review this notion, right? Uh, but the idea here, if you're looking at the third quadrant, now the terminal arm is gonna end up here. That's quadrant three, sorry, quadrant three. Right, so in this case, um, this is your initial arm. Your angle associated is gonna end up here. But that's a reflex angle, right? Because it's greater than 180. The angle that you're specifically focusing on is here, this is beta, right? So when you're looking at primary shrug ratios, guys, you will have to use an acute angle because the triangle has to be a right angle triangle. All right, and you can notice here that if you're looking at quadrant three, Beta is 180 degrees plus theta, but I want you to look at the radian measurement. Beta is pi plus theta. That's what you want to get from this. Okay, so hopefully you can you can understand that. All right, and then fourth quadrant. I'll try to use different color here. In the fourth quadrant, you can notice that um, the terminal arm will be located here. We're only looking at counterclockwise rotation, so a clockwise rotation would be negative, right? So the angle would generate it would be there. This is theta, but we're looking at a related acute angle to resemble the value of theta. It's called beta. You notice that beta is uh, 360 minus theta or you can write beta is equal to two pi minus theta. This is the value that we're gonna mainly be using. And if you, if you look at how to kind of find each of the signs, you'll actually notice that sine is positive in the second quadrant, tan is positive in the third quadrant, and cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Now, if you wanna know how that's done, you can kind of view the video, go over it. I, I would assume that's just review from last year anyways. So I don't wanna to waste too much time with that, but 
what you can understand here is that if you look at this uh, this the circle here, this uh, this unit circle, well, it's a it's basically this actually is a unit circle uh, in standard position. You can actually notice that some of the angles um, that are special angles, in the case of its obtuse and reflex angle variants that are multiples of the special angles, they have the same value. Okay, so this is how you're going to understand how to do it, and this is very short. Uh, this is really a shortcut into finding it. Okay, so say we wanted to look at values that are multiples of special angles. For instance, if you have pi over four, well, let's take a look at the special angles that we looked at, pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three, right? This is 30 degrees, this is um, 45 degrees, this is uh, 60 degrees, right? If you memorize some of your, um, your ratios here, sine pi over six, if you apply uh, this value, this uh, related acute angle here, the angle that it's gonna be associated with will be 150, okay? Well, what does sine 150 look like? It's five pi over six, right? And you can notice that because uh, five pi over six, you can write this as five times 30 degrees, right? It's basically sine five times 30 degrees. It's basically sine 150. And you can tell that sine 150 is in the second quadrant, right? Because this goes from zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, back to 360. But remember, what I want you to do is try to get used to using radians, guys. Uh, pi radians, three pi over two radians, and two pi radians, right? So this tells us, because we know that sine is positive in the second quadrant, sine of pi over six and phi pi over six should be the same, right? So that's something that you wanna understand. Say they're looking at sine uh, three pi over four. Well, if you're looking at three pi over four, think about what this means, right? This means three times pi over four. You know pi over four is 45 degrees. So sine three pi over four is about sine, um, 135. So you know this is in the second quadrant. And once you know the value that you're looking at, sine 3 pi over 4, because it's in the second quadrant, should be equal to positive sine pi over 4. Okay, so hopefully you guys can understand that. All right. And what I'd like to just, uh, kind of demonstrate, if you don't want to learn the full equation that we just kind of generated here, in the second quadrant, uh, sine of n uh, it's acute angle, right? So sine of any kind of, actually, you know what, let's not do that. That'd be, that'd make it more complicated. What I would ask you to do is just memorize some of the values, right? Like if you had sine n of pi over uh, three, it would give you sine pi over three. Sine n of pi over four, you get sine pi over four. It's basically, it's, it's gonna give you uh, the multiple of the, um, the acute angle, the related acute angle will give you this, within the second quadrant will give you the same positive value, okay? I think that probably look a little bit more confusing actually. So try to think of it just like if you have the angle in the second quadrant, and you know that sine that three pi over four has related acute angle of pi over four, and you can actually notice that here, right? Like if you're looking at sine three pi over four, which is here, so the angle uh, from the positive x-axis is this angle here. The related acute angle would be pi over four, which is here. And sine pi over four is equal to sine three pi over four, and it should be positive. So it should be positive square root uh, two over two. Okay, so this is a value you should memorize, right? Hopefully you can kind of understand that. Uh, and But if you took a look at sine seven pi over six, right, this basically means sine seven times pi over six, 30 degrees. So this basically is sine to 10 degrees. And that tells you this is in quadrant three. So sine seven pi over six, you have to relate it to its related acute angle, 
which is sine pi over six, but because it's in the third quadrant, it's a negative. So this is a very quick way of looking at it. I think it's a shortcut that you can kind of utilize. So this is negative one half. Okay, so it's really useful to kind of take a look at it this way. All right, and you can basically uh, do that for each of them, right? Like another example was if they asked you, what is cosine um, 11 pi over six's value, right? Well, you have to relate it to its uh, acute angle, pi over, this related acute angle, pi over six, which is a special angle. And whenever they tell you exact, whenever they tell you to find exact values, you always have to attribute it with a special angle. So cosine 11 pi over six is equal to cosine pi over six, because it's in the fourth quadrant, it should be positive. And how do we know it's in the fourth quadrant? Well, pi over six is 30 degrees. 11 times pi over six is 30 degrees times 11, which is 330, right? And the reason I'm converting this in degrees is because you're so used to working with degrees. I think that's kind of like your, your baseline that you'll appreciate where it's located within the Cartesian plane a lot faster, right? But your answers and all your calculations should be in radians. It's a good way to kind of envision it, right? Whatever helps you guys. Sine pi over six, uh, cosine pi over six is a special angle. We know it's positive square root three over two. You can actually notice that uh, here because that's the value that you locate, that you can see here. And we, this is how we, this is what we mentioned earlier, uh, P, X, and Y, right? X is basically cosine theta and sine and Y is sine theta and tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta. So really just trying to understand this, guys. Uh, you can start to kind of see it unravel. But this stuff you should have already kind of been exposed to. If you're still having trouble with this, uh, please uh, view the video. It's a review video that goes over um, the, the cast rule and just some of these correlated angles. And in the, at the end of the day, you need to kind of memorize this. And what you could also memorize is some of the modifiers. Uh, in terms of sine, you're looking at uh, theta for the second quadrant, theta, uh, sorry, beta is pi minus theta. In the third quadrant, beta is pi plus theta. And fourth quadrant, beta is uh, two pi minus theta. Okay, so try to try to just understand that. Okay, so I think, uh, I think the easiest way to kind of do that is just to kind of go through some questions. So how do we, how do we go through these questions? Well, let's take a look at part D here. Well, I'm just gonna do one question from each section here so that way it kind of gets you started on how to approach this, All right? We need to, and what you could do at the top is you can write down what each of these values means. As 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. 7 pi over 4 basically means um, 7 times pi over 4, which is 7 times 45 degrees, which looks like uh, it looks like 315 degrees. So this tells you this is in the fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant, if you draw out your cast rule, you only know the cosine is positive in this quadrant. So sine 7 pi over 4 should be equal to negative sine pi over 4. The related Acute angle is special angle, it's pi over four. Cosine seven pi over four is equal to positive cosine pi over four. And tan seven pi over four is equal to negative tan pi over four. And because these are special angles, you can find values of them, right? So if you were to express uh, the values of each of these, right? Uh, sine pi over four is basically I think I'll, I'll try to write it out here so you can see that better. This is basically square root two over two. So this is negative square root two over two because there's a negative sign in front of that. Plus cosine pi over four is basically positive square root two over two. And tan pi over four, which is a negative, is negative square root two over two. So that's what these values actually represent. Sine seven pi over four is negative square root two over two. Cosine seven pi over four is positive square root two over two, and tan seven pi over four is negative square root two over two. Okay, so that's how you can come up with the values. I, I would, you know, tell you to kind of go through the rest of this. Um, really, just make sure you can memorize your special angles. Very important, right? 
And there's another uh, question here. Let's, uh, let's take a look at part B here, All right? So I'm just gonna make some space. So in question B, we have four pi over three. And think about what your related acute angle is, right? And it's pretty straightforward. It's just the pi over three. We know pi over three is 60 degrees. So four pi over three is four times 60 degrees, which is 240 degrees. So this tells you that you're looking at third quadrant and only 10 is, uh, sorry, only, well, whoops, cast, only 10 is positive in the third quadrant, right? So if only 10 is positive in the third quadrant, sine four pi over three is equal to negative sine pi over three, right? You just relate it to its related acute angle. Cosine four pi over three is equal to negative cosine pi over three. And 10, negative four pi, sorry, 10 four pi over three is equal to positive 10 pi over three. And these are all special angle values. So sine pi over three here is square root three over two, and there's negative. Cosine pi over three is uh, one half, but there's negative here. And 10 pi over three is positive square root three over two, sorry, three over one. Okay. Now they're asking you for the six trigonometric ratios. So this is also inclusive of your reciprocal ratios, right? Um, for the time being, guys, we'll just focus on the primary trig ratios. But I'm sure you've already learned that cosecant theta is one over sine theta, cotangent theta is one over tan theta, right? And secant theta is one over cosine theta, right? That's what the reciprocal ratios are. And it's just as straightforward as flipping the signs. By flipping the numerator and denominator. Like for instance, if we continue with these values, cosecant four pi over three, which is the reciprocal of sine is negative two over square root of three. Now, ideally you want you don't want a radical on the denominator. So you wanna write this as negative two square root of three over three, right? Uh, secant four pi over three is negative two over one. All right, I'm just flipping it and cotangent four pi over three is one over square root three. Once again, you don't want um, a radical on the denominator, so you can write it like that, okay? So try to understand that. Um, if not, just review the video for just review that you would have seen previous lessons. Uh, I think you have the ability to go through some of these questions, have a special angle table out, and then we'll take up some of the questions um, for the next class if you're still having trouble. There's some more questions here. Uh, I really want you to focus on these type of questions where the special angles, um, the core related angles are present, right? So these are basically extensions of the special angles in different quadrants. Right? And we'll, we'll, we'll consider some of these questions for the next time. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these, uh, these uh, trig ratios, right? And we want to evaluate these uh, and find their exact value. So here we have uh, the, the primary trick ratios. There's a particular angle and radians. And what we want to do here is find the value of this, uh, this ratio, OK? So in order for us to do that, um, we need to understand some of the measures of our special angles. Specifically, we need to understand the measures of the special angles that are generated through the special triangle. So you need to know pi over six radians, uh, pi over four radians, and pi over three radians. Uh -huh. You've been... Okay, so uh, in this case, these are some of the angles that you wanna kind of understand, right? So this is theta, sine theta, cosine theta, tan theta. I need you guys to memorize this. I think last time what we did, we, what we did was we talked about tan theta as sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, it was a quotient identity. And we're gonna we're gonna kind of recall this um, and how this gets created, right? Uh, but the idea here is that uh, these values, sine pi over six, we said was one half, right? And remember that pi over six is equivalent to 30 degrees, pi over four is equivalent to 45 degrees, and pi over three is equivalent to 60 degrees. Okay, so sine pi over six is one half, cosine pi over six is square root three over two, uh, tan pi over six is basically um, 
square root of three over three. Okay, and these are the values I want you guys to use. Uh, remember that I don't prefer you to keep a radical on the denominator. It's good practice not to have a radical on the denominator. So you might see this also as one over square root of three. One over square root of three, right, like 10 pi over six is one over square root of three. But if you multiply this by square root of three to both the numerator and denominator, you get square root of three over three. Uh, you always want to rationalize the denominator if you have a radical sitting there, right? So make sure you guys remember that. Um, and you guys are in grade 12, so I would ex I would hope that you could uh, do that. Uh, make sure that your answers are in good form. Uh, if there's a fraction, some lowest terms, and so forth, okay? So sine pi over 4 here is square root 2 over 2. Uh, cosine pi over 4 is also square root 2 over 2, and then tan pi over 4 is 1. And then sine pi over 3 here uh, is square root 3 over 2. Uh, cosine pi over 3 is 1 half, and tan pi over 3 is square root 3 over 1. Now, in this scenario, uh, this is these are some of the values that we're going to be looking at, right? You can notice that we aren't looking at values of pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, uh, pi, and 2 pi. Those are values that you can generate from the unit circle. At the end of the day, you need to be able to mem have memorized that table that we talked about. And I believe that was in slide 2. Okay, well, we'll get back to that. I just want to kind of segue into a few questions first. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these questions. Uh, sine 3 pi over four, uh, 4 is basically, if you think about it, according to the cast rule, this is what we talked about last time, um, 3 pi over 4, if this is 0 degrees or 0 radians, right, let's, let's assume that everything is in radians, but I will also kind of write the, the degree representation next to it, so that way uh, you guys can kind of tell a lot easier. This is pi over two radians, and pi over two radians is 90 degrees. This is pi radians, which is equivalent to 180 degrees. This is uh, three pi over two radians, which is equivalent to 270 degrees. And then this would be two pi radians, which is zero or 360 degrees if you're doing a full revolution, right? Now, having said this, uh, we know that only sine is positive in the second quadrant. And that's what we showed last time. And we talked about relating uh, these special angles, these acute angles, and we know that an acute angle are basically angles where they are between um, zero radians and pi over two radians. Okay, so they're between, they're basically less than 90 degrees is the idea. And you guys all remember that from your studies of angles and so forth. We know that right angles are basically where theta is equal to pi over two radians, right? Uh, 90 degrees. And essentially, uh, acute angles we represent through the letter beta, B, right? So beta is what we call a related acute angle. In the first quadrant, all angles are acute anyways, so we can use beta to represent that. But in the, all the other angles, um, if you were to look at an angle that is generated, right, and the way we looked at angles that are generated on a Cartesian plane, we said this was an angle in standard position, right? Just writing a few of the tenets down. Um, this is kind of like review from last last class. So if, if you're still having trouble with this, try to go back to the last class's lecture and go over it. But I'm just going to give you a quick overview. We said an angle in standard position is an angle that is positioned on a Cartesian plane, right? There is, we know that an angle is a degree of rotation. Between the uh, between two lines or rays. In this case, we're using two rays, which include the initial arm and the terminal arm. Now, the initial arm is positioned is positioned on the positive x-axis. So that's I'm showing that in blue here. The terminal arm is the one that you're rotating, right? So you're looking at uh, the rotation relative to initial arm, right? So it can be on the initial arm, which implies zero radians or zero degrees, or it can be away from the initial arm. We also stated that the vertex, which is where these two uh, are meet, they, it is basically the origin, okay? So if I draw the terminal arm here, and let's say I'm doing it in purple, right? So this is the terminal arm. The initial arm is always positioned, guys, on the positive x-axis. So this is the positive x-axis. Um, so this is the initial arm. 
This is for the original angle. And the degree of rotation from the, uh, the initial arm to the terminal arm is your angle of theta, okay? And we talked about the relationship of um, radians as a measurement, or it's a unit of measuring angles or degree of rotation, where it is the ratio of the arc length that is subtended by an angle, it's ratio between the arc length and the radius that the, the circle will generate. We can imagine that if you do a full rotation, guys, or if we do a full rotation, then you are gonna get a circle, right? So rate, theta and radians is basically the arc length over the radius, and that's what we talked about last time. But you can imagine that uh, theta, if theta is an acute angle, we can only we can only apply acute angles in these sine, cosine, tan ratios, right? So we can imagine that sine, cosine, and tan, the tangent ratios, these are what we call the primary trig ratios. And the primary trig ratios are basically only used for 90 degree triangles, right? Now, if you have an obtuse angle, if you have a reflex angle and so forth, if you have any angle that's greater than 90 degrees, then it doesn't become valid anymore, right? And you can always remember your sine, cosine, and tan ratios using SOHCAHTOA. So how do we, the, the question here is, okay, how do we solve for uh, these values? How do we solve for these ratios where these are all obtuse angles? Now, how do we tell it's obtuse? Well, let's say I'm looking at the first case, right? Sine three pi over four radians is basically, if you think about it in degrees, pi over four here is 45 degrees, right? So three pi over four is three times 45 degrees, which is basically 135 degrees. So this is equivalent to me saying sine 135 degrees, right? And that automatically tells you that this has to be in the second quadrant, right? So this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant, right? We're looking at an angle in standard position, right? And we stated that in angles in standard position, a counterclockwise rotation from the initial arm creates a positive angle. A clockwise rotation from the initial arm will create a negative angle. Okay, so all of our rotations, because we were looking at positive angles, guys, um, we're gonna be looking at counterclockwise rotations. Right, so if we're looking at an angle of 135 degrees, we know that's in the second quadrant. Now, if I redraw this, uh, angle in standard position, right? Your reference angle or your reference ray here is the initial arm, which is located on the positive x-axis. This is zero radians, this is pi over two radians, this is pi radians, three pi over two radians, and then two pi radians, right? Now, in this case, um, because your angle is obtuse, it should be found in the second quadrant. So as a result, the degree of rotation should be from uh, this initial arm to the terminal arm in purple, right? This is your angle. Or we can't use this angle in our ratios because it's obtuse. So what we need to do is we need to find a related acute angle. How do we find a related acute angle? And this is what we talked about last time. A related acute angle is supplementary to the actual angle, right? So you can imagine that 180 minus beta, which is pi minus beta, should be equal to theta. We're always looking at uh, the angle theta, but we're going to use a related acute angle to represent that. Now, what is important and what we discussed last time was the ratio, the magnitude of the ratio of the related acute angle is equivalent to the magnitude of the ratio of the actual angle. However, the sign associated with that ratio may be different. Okay, so putting that into perspective, um, in this case, we need to first find the related acute angle. And I can show you guys a really quick shortcut. So if we're looking at question one here, right, in question one, you have sine three pi over four, right? We know that the related acute angle that's associated with this, um, with this specific ratio that you were trying to find, we know that the related acute angle here is pi over four. Right? And if you don't see it immediately, you can always just kind of uh, look for it, right? It's gonna be one of these three special angles, right? If it's not one of these three, it's gonna be, be in the segment of pi over two, pi or three pi over two. But or another way you can do this is we know that if this is three pi over four, 
then theta here, or beta, this is theta here, right? Beta, if you look at this modifier here, sorry, right, beta is pi minus theta. So if you wanted to look at beta here, you just do pi minus theta, in this case is three pi over four, which is pi over four. So your related acute angle here is pi over four, or you can just look at the, the ratio. And the idea here is that in the second quadrant, sine ratios are positive. Well, what does that mean? Well, that tells us that sine theta will equal positive sine beta in the second quadrant. So what that means here is sine three pi over four will equal um, positive sine pi over four. And we know that sine pi over four here is basically one of these values, the special angles, right? And we know it's square root two over two. So this value, in fact, is positive square root two over two. So that's like really the quick way of doing it, right? Um, and you can actually just look at it just by um, by looking at the question itself. Like in the second question, right? We have cosine five pi over six. What's our related acute angle here? Well, in this case, it's just pi over six, right? But remember that cosine five pi over six, we need to figure out, okay, which quadrant is it in? Right, so I would draw out the cast rule. I draw out this Cartesian plane here. You can imagine that you know the initial arm is located here. Five pi over six, if, is it you gotta ask yourself, is it in quadrant one, two, three, or four? Because according to the cast rule, right, sine is positive in the second quadrant, tan is positive in the third quadrant, cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Well, we know that pi over six is associated with 30 degrees. So it makes uh, sense to say that five pi over six is equivalent to cosine 150 degrees, right? Because it's five times 30. And we can immediately tell that this is gonna be found in the second quadrant, right? So it's basically 150 degrees. It should be a little bit uh, wider actually, sorry. Okay, so it should be a little bit wider, but uh, that's just a sketch guys. So you don't need to worry about that too much. This is your angle, right? This is 150 degrees, that's theta. But like we said before, cosine, uh, sine, cosine, tan, we can't, Im we can't input obtuse angle values. We have to, they have to be acute, right? Because these are primary trig ratios. So we need to find a related acute angle. A related acute angle here is right here, right? It's always supplementary, right? So in this case, uh, the related acute angle, uh, beta is basically theta minus, uh, sorry, it's pi minus theta. And likewise, theta is uh, pi minus beta. Right? And you can think about this by drawing it. And having said that, because only sine is positive in this quadrant, we can immediately tell that cosine five pi over six is related to its related acute angle, cosine pi over six, but it will be the negative value because cosine is negative. Cosine pi over six here, is negative square root three over two. So that's the value of, um, that's the value of that ratio, right? And what's important to understand here, if you wanted to figure out uh, what each of the modifiers are uh, for each quadrant, if you think about an angle in standard position like this, right? And you think about, you know, the initial arm is here, right? The vertex between the terminal arm and the initial arm uh, is basically the origin, right? And what you could do here is you could try drawing the terminal arm in different quadrants, right? And relate the related acute angle. Like for instance, if this is the related acute angle in this quadrant, this is a related acute angle in this quadrant, this would be the related acute angle in this quadrant. And this would be the related acute angle in this quadrant. So if you wanted to approximate theta in the second quadrant, it would basically be pi minus beta. If you wanted to approximate theta in the sec in the third quadrant, this would be pi plus beta. If you wanted to look at um, the angle theta in the fourth quadrant, theta would be two pi minus beta, right? And it's always counterclockwise rotations, guys. Right, so this is zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, then two pi. Okay, so keep that in mind, right? Uh, but it, it gets as straightforward as just um, being able to recognize some of these exact values and just figuring out which quadrant it's located in, right? So it's probably the fastest way to do this. Um, if you're still having trouble with this, 
I would say go back to the previous lecture. So what we're gonna do is going, let's go through the segment of problems and hopefully this will help you to understand that, right? So we also solved for this. This was negative square root three over two. Let's take a look at uh, question three. So 10, let me use uh, 10, seven pi over four. Let's see if I could do it here. So question three is saying, uh, we wanna evaluate for 10, seven pi over four. And whenever you guys see the word evaluate, that it already implies that we're looking for exact values. You're not punching this in a calculator, right? You have to actually show your work. And if you don't show your work, I, I'm just gonna give you a zero, right? Because I, I don't want you to punch it in your calculator. I know there's calculators that do find exact values. Uh, I need you to show your work, show me which, uh, which uh, court, which you have to draw out the cast rule, um, show me which coordinates it's located in and show me which signs are positive or negative, right? So in this case, if you have 10, seven pi over four, uh, if we look at this, if we're asking ourselves, okay, which coordinate is this located in, right? And you can start off by drawing out your cast rule here, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. You can imagine that if you're looking at angle and standard position, right, this is your initial arm, your terminal arm is gonna be some uh, value away from that. Now, in this case, how do we uh, recognize our related acute angle, right? Well, our related acute angle, it's kind of given here, right? It's pi over four, right? So beta here should be pi over four, or you can use the modifier, uh, but however, this is a lot easier. Now, in this case, you can imagine that pi over four is 45 degrees. So you're doing 10, seven times 45 degrees, if you think about it like that, is equivalent to 10, seven pi over four. And that is basically equivalent to 315 degrees. Okay, so seven pi over four is 315 degrees. All right, so just memorize the values of the special angles, guys. Um, and just know how you convert. Make sure you memorize their radian measurements. Um, over time, if you forget, you can just convert it. Uh, we showed you how to do the degree to radian conversion. Because we know this is 10 through 15 degrees, we know that this is going to be in quadrant four. So if it's in quadrant four, then uh, we're basically drawing our terminal arm here, right? So this angle here is 315 degrees, but the, the really key point here is that the related acute angle beta is, seven, is pi over four, right? So you can tell very quickly. Or what you could do is, um, you, because you know it's in the fourth quadrant, you can use the modifier, theta is equal to two pi minus beta or and you can use that modifier and you can also just solve, um, you can also just solve for beta, right? So beta is equal to two pi minus theta, which is two pi minus seven pi over four. And that's gonna give you pi over four, right? So that will also help you to solve the modifier. Uh, in case you don't wanna do the mathematics, you can actually just uh, recognize the modifier very quickly by looking at the question, right? So you'll almost, you'll almost very likely see it. Right, and because we know that tan is negative in this quadrant, and this uh, goes to reason that tan seven pi over four is equal to, and we're relating it to its related acute angles ratio, but it's gonna be the negative of that. Okay, so you're gonna have the same magnitude, but it's just gonna be negative tan pi over four, which is negative one, and you should memorize that value. Okay, so that's what we talked about here. All right, so you need to have this memorized, guys. Um, make sure you understand it. Right, so we'll try to go through the rest of these questions. Right, um, sine seven pi over six, which is qu uh, question four. Right, take a few minutes to just try it, try it yourself, and then you know you can always just kind of go back and view the video. Um, so the sine seven pi over six here is basically, if you think about it, um, you can all, uh, already imagine that your special angle is pi over six, right? Beta should be pi over six. And in case you don't see that initially, what you can do here, you know that pi over six is equivalent to 30 degrees, right? So sine seven pi, let me change colors here. Sine seven pi over six is equivalent to sine seven times 30 degrees, which is sine to 10 degrees. That tells you that this is gonna be located in the third quadrant, right? According to cast rule, tan is positive in the third quadrant, right? So that tells you that, you know, the angle is gonna be somewhere here, 
right? This is your initial arm here. And um, if you wanted to calculate this, we know that the modifier in the third quadrant, theta is equal to pi plus beta. If you want to solve for beta, you can always just um, plug in this value, right? And because we know beta is 7 pi over 6, sorry, theta is 7 pi over 6, you can just subtract by pi and you get pi over 6. So if you don't want to do that, you can just recognize it very quickly, right? So this value here, beta, is pi over 6, but your whole angle here is basically this amount, right? You can imagine that that is a reflex angle, right? It's greater than straight angle, which is 180 degrees. Based on this, you know that because tan cannot, tan is the only ratio that's positive in this quadrant, then if you relate sine seven pi over six to its equivalent ratio, sine pi over six, it's related uh, acute angles ratio, then we know that there's a negative sign here. So all you have to do is write sine seven pi over six is equal to negative sine pi over six, which is negative uh, one half. Okay, so that is the idea guys, right? So this is negative one half. Okay, um, let's go through a few more questions, but I really want to draw your attention to these reciprocal ratios afterwards. Uh, let's, let's finish this last one. So cosine five pi over three. Okay, so take a few minutes to also try it. You can pause the video and then continue afterwards. Um, you can take a look at to see if your procedure was correct. If you're evaluating this, uh, what we're doing here is uh, you gotta imagine what is your related acute angle? Well, beta here is pi over three by just inspection. However, if you didn't wanna look at it that way, um, we know that pi over three is equivalent to 60 degrees. So cosine five pi over three is equal to cosine five times 60 degrees, which is cosine 300 degrees. And cosine 300 degrees tells us that it should be in the third court, in the fourth quadrant, right? Sorry. So this is zero radians or zero degrees, um, pi over two radians or 90 degrees, pi radians, which is 180 degrees, three pi over two radians, which is 270 degrees, and then two pi radians, which is 360. So in this scenario, um, uh, you're gonna expect to see your terminal arm located here. This is your initial arm, right? Your degree of rotation would be as follows, right? This would be 300, so this would be an example of a reflex angle. And if you wanted to find beta manually, right, you can imagine that if this is theta, beta would be here, right? And then you can imagine that theta is two pi minus beta, or beta is two pi minus theta, right? So if you wanted to do that, beta is equal to two pi minus five pi over three, because this is the value of theta, right? And that's gonna give you pi over three. Right, but I think this is just a lot easier if you just look at it by inspection. So just by looking at it by inspection, you know that you're relating cosine five pi over three to its related acute angles ratio of pi over three. The only thing you have to worry about here is the sine. Well, the sine here, because only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, should be positive. So what is cosine of pi over three? Well, it's part of your special angles that you should have memorized. It should be one half, so it's positive one half. That's it. Now, the only other complex type of questions are the reciprocal ratios that are related to this stuff. All right, so you can imagine that these are what we call uh, related trig expressions because you can relate, um, you can basically relate, uh, related, you could basically relate acute angles to obtuse angles, right? So you can relate the uh, acute angle trig ratios to their um, corresponding uh, obtuse angle and reflex angle trig ratios. Yeah, so it's very important. You just have to look at the sign associated with it and that's where the cast rule kind of comes in, right? Now, in this scenario, if you have reciprocal ratios and just kind of going over what the reciprocal ratios are, we know that cosecant theta is one over sine theta. We know that secant theta is one over cosine theta. And we know that cotangent theta is one over tan theta. And because we said that tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta, cotangent theta can also be written as cosine theta over sine theta. And make sure you remember this because um, when, we, when we tackle identities, this is gonna be very important. 
But because we know these reciprocal ratios, we can also solve for exact values of reciprocal ratios. So I'm going to show you guys this through the next two examples. So in question six here, we have cosecant 11 pi over 6. right? So cosecant 11 pi over 6 here, second. Cosecant 11 pi over 6. Now if you want to solve for this, if you're evaluating for this, the first thing you need to do here, guys, is you need to convert it into its reciprocal primary trig ratio. So write this as 1 over sine 11 pi over 6. Now, what you want to do here is evaluate the sine 11 pi over 6 first, and then include it in the reciprocal value or the reciprocal uh, ratio, right? So in order for me to do this, let's figure out what is sine 11 pi over 6, right? So what is sine 11 pi over 6? Well, this immediately tells you, you can tell your related acute angle here is pi over 6, right? And basically, this is equivalent to sine. We know pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So this is 11 times 30 degrees, which is sine 330 degrees. This immediately tells us that this is going to be in the fourth quadrant. So if it's in the fourth quadrant, we know that only the cosine ratio is positive. Right? This is your initial arm. Right? This is your terminal arm. And your angle here, theta, is 11 pi over 6. So this is your angle. Oops. OK, so it's 11 pi over 6 radians. And what you need to do here is you need to find a really acute angle uh, you could just look at it by inspection like that, or uh, if you wanted to calculate it, um, basically you know that theta here is 2 pi minus beta. So beta here is 2 pi minus theta. Beta is a related acute angle. So beta here is 2 pi minus uh, 11 pi over 6, which is pi over 6 radians, right? So if it's pi over 6 radians, then we can relate um, our ratio here of sine 11 pi over 6 to some positive or negative value of sine pi over 6. The value or the magnitude of the ratio will be the same. The only difference is the sine. And the sine we have to determine through cast rule. Now, the sine here should be negative because of the fact that uh, it's in the fourth quadrant. right? So because it's in the fourth quadrant, it should be negative. And negative sine pi over 6 here is negative 1 half. Okay. Now, because we know it's negative sine pi over 6, then we can understand that uh, when you get negative one half on the denominator and you're dividing this by one, remember we're looking at cosecant, this should be negative two. So the last step is for you to flip the numerator and denominator because you are taking a reciprocal, right? But other than that, it's really the same process. The only additional thing is that last step where you have to find the reciprocal. And so we'll do one last question and then I'll let you guys uh, do some, a few questions just to review this stuff. Um, we'll do calculating secant 5 pi over 4. OK, so secant 5 pi over 4. If you're evaluating for this, um, you can immediately just take a look at your related acute angle. It should be pi over 4. However, if you didn't want to look at it that way, we know that 5 uh, pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So 5 pi over 4, if you want to convert this into degrees, you can also use the formula. Right? You can also use uh, 180 over pi, but it's just a little time consuming. Right? I would always just kind of look at it this way. They think about exact values. Whenever you see the word exact value, guys, uh, it's usually in the format of these, uh, these trig angles. Right? So only these angles are the special angles. So we're going to give you, if I ever say evaluate, then it's going to usually have these or values from the unit circle, like uh, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi. OK, so make sure you just really understand the special angles. Uh, related trig expressions uh, for 5 pi over 4. Well, first of all, if you think about it, uh, we know that 5 pi over 4 should be 5 times pi over 4, which is 5 times 45 degrees, which should be 225 degrees. Before you do anything else, you need to convert this into its reciprocal primary trig ratio. Secant is a reciprocal ratio. So you want to convert this into secant 5 pi over 4 is equal to 1 over sine 5 pi over 4. Right? So you want to do that 
here. And then you have to solve for, okay, what is sine? Oh, sorry, I should be one over cosine, not sine. Sine is cosecant, sorry guys. So cosecant phi pi, uh, cosine phi pi over four. Right, so secant five pi over four is one over cosine five pi over four. And that's gonna give you that what we need to do now is we need to figure out, okay, what is cosine five pi over four? Well, in this case, you should relate it to cosine pi over four. It's, re it's related a Q ratio, right? Now, in this case, we know that it's 225, so it should be in the third quadrant, right? So if it's in the third quadrant, if this is your initial arm, and this is your terminal arm, Right, this is the angle that you're looking at. Then this angle here is beta, which you'll actually notice that is pi over four. If you don't want to, if you want to find it in a different way, you can imagine that theta is pi plus beta, and beta is theta minus pi. Okay, so you can always just kind of memorize the modifiers as well. And in this case, because only tan is positive in this quadrant, then this should be negative. A negative cosine pi over four, we know this ratio's value is square root two over two, so it's negative square root two over two. Now that's what cosine five pi over four is, but one over negative square root two over two, uh, the reciprocal of this is gonna give you negative two over square root two. You flip the numerator and denominator. And like we said before, we don't want to have a radical on the denominator, right? You wanna maintain good form. What I'm gonna do is rationalize this radical and multiply by square root two, so you get negative two square root two over two, and two divided by two is one, so you get negative square root two, and that's your answer. Okay, so hopefully uh, you can understand this, guys. Um, it's, it's a very powerful tool to kind of draw out this, this diagram to kind of help you, uh, but just really understand and memorize your special angles. You can't really do this stuff unless you memorize your, you have your special angles memorized, right? So try to take a look at that, and then uh, we'll do some more questions.